Bizarre Brain Comics. <laughs> hello, hello. Gary here for Bizarre Brain Comics. This is where I like to take a look at some older comics and talk a little bit about the characters and creators and examine the stories and the art. Today, I'm going to take a look at this old book here from Charlton Comics, 1968, Fighting Army, number 81. I'll just look at one of the stories in there. And then let's see what I have in the big book of knowledge about this. Mm. Fighting Army, number 81, 1968, Charlton Comics. And the cover by Nestro Oliveira. And the story that we're going to look at is The Warrior, also by uh, drawn by Nestor Oliveira. And I uh, couldn't find anything about uh, who the writer was. Okay, in Fighting Army, it, it was a bi-monthly war comic which ran from 1956 to 84, and primarily in reprints after after 78. And it was originally titled uh, Soldiers, Mar uh, Soldiers and Marine Comics. But uh, the Fighting Army uh, title did not start with number one. And uh, it was published under that title for a total of 157 issues. That's a respectable, respectable run, especially for, for something from Charlton. Most of their stuff didn't run that long. A couple of westerns and some, some war comics. Now, the artist... Nestor Oliveira. He was an Argentinian comic artist. I couldn't find his dates. He was an Argentinian comic artist, and he specialized in war stories. At the age of 22, he began drawing for Figuritas. I'm not sure, not sure whether that was a comic or a magazine. Or both. Then, he went to... Uh, Oracero magazine and then worked for a variety of other Argentinian publishers as well as British the British publisher Fleetway and other European publishers so so he did a lot of work and was seen around the world and I'm sure the Charlton books was his primary outlet in the U.S. So, let's go back to the horrifying uh, days of World War II on the battlefield in Europe with Fighting Army. Okay, here we are, Fighting Army, number 81, 1968. You can see this this uh, copy has uh, some, what looks like could be some um, mildew damage or staining on the cover. It's in pretty reasonable reasonable shape and a r real nice dramatic action cover by Nestor Oliveira. It said, "Gripping real life excitement in the Warrior." Yeah, and. Uh, if you've listened to me before, you know that I really like uh, war comics. That's not to say I like war, but I like war comics and I like war movies. And I uh, just want to show this one little thing here. That uh, And the first, the uh, 
first story in here is drawn by Sam Glansman. He he uh, was an artist who was big uh, in war comics. Uh, did a lot of work for DC Comics in the war comics and uh, for war comics for several other publishers, too, primarily at Charlton. But he did. Uh, a few other characters as well. He did one version of Tarzan. He did uh, 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 a version of Hercules and uh, another jungle hero whose name I can't remember at the moment. But that's immaterial. I just wanted to show you that. because he's Sam Glansman was pervasive. I covered him in a couple of couple of stories. Now let's take a look at our our story of the warrior here. You can see here on the splash splash page, and it's basically a recreation of that cover illustration. Looks like it was just taken, and then they plopped in the the title and and stuff here, and these uh, floating heads here, which re represents the the opposing generals. And it's a real real nice drawing, uh, nice. Uh, he did some, some nice action scenes, some uh, and um, yeah, some really really good anatomy, great looking uniforms. Let me start off here because this is World War II, and uh, this is when um, the young man uh, Mike Lydon had just turned 18, and he is enlisting in in the army in 1943, and his dad's not happy because bet they wouldn't take him because he was too old. But he reluctantly takes his takes his boy off to uh, to the train or bus station to head off to the army. And it just shows him uh, learning through boot camp, learning how to become a soldier. Do marching and weapons and stuff and then now they're on they're on the ship heading to heading to Europe. After all these months of training and and stuff, and he's he's concerned because sure these the the Germans here they're they're bad, but he is he's concerned and he's and he's frightened. And here's his own general comes up while he's while he's thinking. He says, "Why aren't you down below sleeping, son?" He said, "I couldn't sleep, General. I guess I'm scared." I've got news for you, son. I'm scared too. Showing that he's not afraid to be afraid. He knows that he is. But the kid, he says, well, he's he's not so much afraid to... He is afraid, but he's more afraid to that he won't live up to expectations, that he won't be able to fulfill his duties to, to his country and his and his, and his, uh, and his uh, 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 unit mates. And here they are, right in the thick of it. Normandy Beach, June... Uh, June 6th, 1944, the D-Day invasion, right there on the beach. Ah, oh, I tell you, that, that is horrifying. If, if you, they're trying to represent it here pretty realistic, it, as, as they can. Kind of like if you saw uh, Saving Private Ryan. I mean, that was, it was a horrifying experience to, to have lived through, and a lot of people lived through it. A lot of people died there. And... Here he is. Got to keep moving. He keeps him, he, realizing he doesn't know everything. And he, if he makes a mistake or sees somebody else make a mistake, he remembers. And he tries to avoid making that same mistake. Here he is uh, being pinned down by this uh, 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 German sniper. Takes him out with a grenade. And heads on up. The hill. Got, to got to take out that machine gun nest. Got to take out that machine gun nest. He climbs the sand. Up. Takes him by surprise. Has to, got that soldier has to, and he goes over the side. Then, bam, 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 he takes out that machine gun nest. And there are, later on, all through, like I said here, it's called the longest day. And it, and it was, just fighting and fighting and fighting for hours on end. Trying to make progress, going up the hill. Finally, get a chance to sit down and relax. Rest a little bit after a day of fighting and a day of horror. 
and this is real, real, I mean actually that's contrast here is just going through going through the motions doing the fighting doing what he has to do and then getting a chance to relax and probably having nightmares and then the days and weeks and months that follow as they make their way across Europe uh, fighting uh, town to town house to house through the streets he learns how to as soon as you bust in kick ass and take names hey there ah, no one there but they know that the machine those machine gunners are, are up up, up uh, um, on top of the building I'm going to take out their buddies they got a creep up there but there could be booby traps and all this other stuff so the, the corporal goes first and then Mike ah he, and the, the Germans take him by surprise but then Mike takes him by surprise tossing a grenade up there and then he, <laughs> it gives him a chance to blow blow him away he didn't hadn't even pulled the grenade the pin on the grenade just faked him out that way he didn't didn't waste a grenade and he could have used a couple bullets and they keep going now they got those machine gunners. Now he uses the grenade. They're being distracted. If you can't get a good shot, they're being distracted. Uh, blows, blows something up close by, and then they get a chance to get in there and get those soldiers, those German soldiers. Well, here they go, finally get to, get to where they're going, at least f for the resolution of this story. Uh, they, they call it, what did they call it? Um, Doomsday Hill, and this is a hill. They're assaulting the the Allies are assaulting, and the Germans are defending. And this is a crack SS unit. It's it, and here the two generals are are together. I guess they're talking about surrender or or, or whatever. And neither neither is going, willing to back down. And, and he's, the German says, "My men are the crack crack troops. Yours are they're professional soldiers, and your men are amateurs. They don't stand a chance against my men." Well, we'll see about that. They'll do. My men will do. So here they are. Oh, they're talking while the battle's going on. And they're watching it from afar. And then got the, these machine gunners. And the the, the um, allies are, are pinned down. But this one soldier. It's Mike. He's up and he's just calmly, boldly walking right into the, into the line of fire. Head, watching on uh, binoculars. And he's gone, and they, go, they keep blasting away, but they miss him. They just and he just keeps coming until he gets right up there, and he just starts blasting away and goes in, and he takes out those professional soldiers. He's just a, a farm boy, and he just sends those boys to hell. And afterwards, and the 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 SS officer, he just cannot believe it. He just cannot believe it. Then here later afterwards, after the battle. Says Lyndon, General Rollins wants to speak to you. Says, I watched you in action, Mike, and I'm putting you in for a medal. You were afraid you wouldn't be good enough. How do you feel now? Reckon we'll do. We'll do the job, sir. Like you told me, we're better th than we thought. Ah, oh, yeah, and that's a good story. I mean, it, it's not detail it just has some impact it really reminds me of a, a dc war story and it's well well written well drawn uh, you, you get some pathos you, you don't get to see a whole lot of the character you do get to see some good action uh, there's very little uh, um panel to panel continuity throughout most of the story because it's taking place over a long period of time until you get here to the conclusion and it, and it's very bold well drawn and a good story well told and that is what i've got today for fighting army and i'm sure there were a lot of boys just like him in that war in korea in vietnam in the middle east all all being a credit to their country and their unit And thank you for joining me. Please like, share, subscribe. Share it with your other uh, uh, friends who are interested in war comics or just World War II. And, and please...
comment if you if you feel up to it. I appreciate that. And remember, comics are art.